Interest rates have dropped three times in a row. That means our Kelowna market should be on fire, right? Well, not exactly. So in this month's Vantage Report, I'm gonna break down exactly what's going on in the market, share with you what that means to you if you're thinking about buying or thinking about selling a property. I'm AJ Hazzy and I make these Vantage reports to make sure that you guys can make informed, intelligent decisions on your real estate. So welcome back, thanks for watching again, and let's get into it. Starting with sales, we can see here that the total number of sales year over year is down about 3%, which is not a massive number, but when you compare it quarter over quarter, we've seen an almost 20% drop in sales. Now simultaneously, when you look at inventory, we're up to over 4,200 active listings. This is more than double from what we had when things were hot. Now the year over year change is 32%. And over the quarter, just in the last three months alone, we've seen inventory climb by 24%. And so that's why it feels, if you're buying right now, like there's a lot of choice. In fact, it's almost a paralyzing amount of choice when you're out looking at properties. So with less sales and more inventory, what that's done to our absorption rate has ballooned up to 15 months worth of supply. Now, if you've been following my channel, you understand for context that about six months is balanced. Much less than that, you're in a seller's market. Much more than that, you're in a buyer's market. So at 15 months, we are well into a buyer's market. We haven't seen this much inventory since just after the global financial crisis in 2009 and 10. When you look at the little indicators, it is taking longer to get a property sold. It's showing at 43 days when you check on the MLS. Now this is actually a little bit misleading. I went one step deeper and I started to look at the original list price and the original listing when properties hit the market. What I found when you account for listings that are not part of the days on market that are shown currently on the, when they sell is that it's actually taking 114 days on average to get a property sold. And the discounting, which we've seen about a 20% increase in the average discount, it's still only showing an average discount of about 2.6%. But the reality is when you look at the original listing that it's nearly 10% from the original list price. So on the average, 1.1, $1.2 million home, we're seeing a disparity of about 110,000 between what it originally listed for and what it sold for. And so there's a decent amount of price discovery that's still taking place. People are listing at slightly optimistic numbers and it's taking a while to get the property sold. Now, many people believe that you hold out for a better offer, but in going through this process, I'm able to quantify to you that pricing your home properly in the beginning is of paramount importance. Homes that sell within 5% are really only taking about a month to sell. Now, if you get the price wrong between five and 10%, that balloons up to nearly three months. And if you're 10% or more than that above what the property should sell for, you're looking at a year or longer. There is this sort of myth that you can hold out for a better offer. When you look at the stats, it is glaringly obvious that the longer your home sits on the market, the lower the price you eventually get. Not only do you get less money, but there's a time value of money as well. So you don't have your cash and you're not able to do what it is that you would do, whether that's an investment or rebuying or any of the other things that could be really beneficial to you, you're waiting, you're delaying. And that's a major problem for a lot of people. Waiting a year just shouldn't be or isn't an option for many people. So pricing your home properly comes down to getting proper advice. Now, we're not talking about fire sailing. We're talking about properly positioning your home against a significant amount of competition. We have over 15 months of inventory. So it's important that we represent the best value in our price bracket. Now, there are some things that we can do to get you a higher price. There are little tips and tricks that we use to make the property present better, to get it in tip top shape, all the deferred maintenance, all of the little you know, decorative things that we can do to make sure that it shows wonderfully. And we can elevate the competition for your home by doing a coming soon campaign and an initial marketing thrust that puts thousands of eyeballs on it. But at the end of the day, nothing will have a bigger impact on your eventual price and net proceeds than picking the right price right off the bat. So if you're sitting with your real estate agent and they tell you a number you don't like, remember this video because a lot of times agents will tell you what you want to hear or they're too afraid to tell you the reality and we might still be stuck in 2022 thinking our home was worth what we thought it was once worth. But here's a bit of good news. It's relative. If you're rebuying again, whatever you're going to rebuy has also come down. If you're taking your proceeds and not rebuying, 
you've got lots of options out there right now for high yielding investments and you'll be able to make it back quickly. What you should be concerned with is how would two to three years worth of delay in order to get that price affect your plans because the true currency, the true wealth in this world is time. And so I lived the 2008, 2009 crisis. It took five years for things to recover. In that five years, if your plans were delayed and on hold, you have an entirely different family in five years. You have an entirely different set of uh, circumstances in five years. You want to get this done now. It's important that we price the home properly and get you where you want to go. So hopefully that's helpful, guys. If you want to know what your house will sell for and those little tips and tricks we can use to get you that extra three to five percent, you can by all means reach out to us. We'd love to do a pre-listing consultation with you and uh, show you exactly what you would put in your jeans in this very market. With all of these indicators showing that the market's getting worse, you would expect that our prices are falling off the cliff. Well, that's simply not the case. The median price is actually still right around 750,000 for the average transaction. It's down about 2% from 750 to 744, but the market is showing significant resiliency. Over the last two years, it's been more or less flat. We're seeing that across most sectors with condos maybe outperforming everything else by a little bit because people have been compressed down into the lower price points. Now, when we look at the higher end of the market, over a million dollars, homes at a million to two million are down about 26%. When we go to two to three million, it's only down about 15%. So as you go up in price, the market seems to be less affected right now. When we look at the market segment by segment, we can see condos down 16%. Townhomes are down a full 28% in sales with single family homes right at that 20% mark. So I'm still scratching my head trying to understand why townhome sales are down so much because really most of the single family home buyers should be looking at townhomes for the affordability of them, but that's not showing up in the stats and I don't have a great answer for you. Now, the benchmark single family home still remains at above $1 million. This same property would have been over 1.2 at the peak. So we saw a significant correction. Now, a lot of people are still waiting for this big correction to happen, but I'm here to tell you it's already happened. Just like in 2008, when things came down about 18 to 20%, that has happened. And so at the peak of things in the spring of 22, we saw things start to fall. They fell off about 18 to 20%. And since then, we've traded roughly sideways since that for about 18 to 24 months. I started Vantage West in 2008, so I remember it vividly and I have the stats to back it up. When things fell off, we traded sideways for about five years. Now, a lot of sellers are saying to me, AJ, should we wait then and put our home on the spring when rates have come down? Well, we've already seen what three aggressive rate drops does. All that it does is it unlocks more sellers than buyers. There are a lot of people who are waiting to sell their home so when rates are down so that they can afford where they're going. As a consequence, when rates come down, we've had more new inventory hit the market than we've had new demand. And so when supply outstrips demand, as I showed you, the only thing we see is more competition and sellers competing with tens of thousands of dollar reductions. The spring is not likely going to yield you a better price than you would get now because there's going to be lots of people flooding the market at that point, and it's unlikely that rates will be much lower on the five-year fixed. When you look at the bond market, it's already priced in the next three rate cuts, which are not inevitable. The thing to understand about the fixed rate mortgage market is that it's tied to the bond market. And the bond market for the last little while has priced in three more rate cuts already. So the fixed rate you see of under 4% already has the next three Bank of Canada rate cuts priced into it. And we watch the bond market to know what the fixed rate mortgage market is likely to do. And we've actually seen the market go the other way in the last little bit. So fixed rate mortgages are not likely to come down any further. Variable rate, on the other hand, will benefit from those three rate cuts. So I'm excited for that because I have been hanging on with a variable rate mortgage as things went all the way up north of seven and have now come back down. But most people have been living on and are entering into fixed rate mortgages as of late. Now, here's a tip. If you are thinking of buying now, it would make sense to go the variable route. There is uh, a significant indicator that the rates will continue to drop as evidenced by the bond market already pricing them in. And so as that, those drops happen, your rate will come down and it's very unlikely we're gonna go back into a high interest period for some time. So I think the variable rate 
will serve you well. So what does all of this mean to you if you're thinking about buying or selling? Well, let's start with buyers. If you have the appetite to buy a property right now, particularly a move up property, if you want to sell where you currently are and upgrade your property, you can make a wonderful trade. And the best time to do that is over the winter months. This is where sellers are most fearful and most agreeable to a negotiation. And so if you're waiting for rates to come down to do that, I would just say to you, the variable rate mortgage will allow you to take advantage of those as it comes down. And the best deal you're going to do, which is tens of thousands of dollars in terms of discounting, will happen over the winter and that will far exceed any differences in the rates. So I've said this before on the channel, we date the rate, we marry the price. So we wanna get the best possible price over the winter months is when you negotiate that. Now, if you're thinking of selling and you think you're gonna hold off till the spring, again, I would caution you that many people will be following that same thought process, which means right now with 4,200 listings on the market might, if you can believe it, be the actually lowest inventory period that we have for the foreseeable future. And so if you don't want to compete with two or three other people on your street, now would be the time to do it. All I would say to you is get your photos right now. Don't wait until we have snow. Make sure we take pictures of your home while it still looks good. Autumn shots look wonderful online. And that way, even if you aren't thinking about listing till you know November, December, January, you've got those great shots already in the can. So when we hit the market, we've got the best possible presentation. Well, there you have it, guys. I hope that helps. Uh, I make these videos to help you make informed decisions on real estate. Now, if you're interested to see what of the 4,200 properties on the market might suit your fancy, you can start that process right here on the video blog. And if you're interested to see what your home would sell for in today's market, and even receive a couple tips and tricks on how you might be able to get some additional proceeds out of your sale, you can start that process right here on the video blog as well. Once again, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in a couple weeks.